Welcome, everyone. We're here today to talk about the future of Inner Source. Um, and I'm delighted to welcome with me uh, four of our uh, illustrious board members or former board members. So we've got Georg, our director. We've got Isabel, is Inner Source Commons chair. We've got Daniel, our president, and Denise, the founder of Inner Source Commons. And we're all here today to talk about the future of Inner Source. You heard Georg say it earlier that, uh, that Inner Source is at an inflection point. We have seen in just recent surveys that people are saying, Gartner are saying it's a top developer trend. The state of Octaverse report said that pretty much everyone they surveyed in GitHub said that they're doing inner source, which is amazing. And various different other reports have, have suggested that inner source is really starting to spread. So my first question is why now? I mean, obviously, Tim O'Reilly coined this way back, coined the term way back in the early noughties. Some of us, Georg, for example, have, has been doing inner source for longer than the Commons has existed, but it's only really taking off in the last few years. So, Georg, maybe you'd start and just say, why do you think it's taking off now at a broad scale? That's obviously because we do such a great work in the Commons, isn't it? No, but ser serious. I mean, I, I guess we had a part in it, <laughs> but uh, I think the main points are really that A, these days, developers want it. They even demand it when they apply for companies. Uh, I actually witnesses myself at Bosch I mean, and companies actually using InnoSource to market themselves to developers and make themselves attractive. That's the one part of the equation. The other one is that companies have caught up to the trend and know that they can't, that they stand to benefit from it, right? Um, I actually, I found this uh, presentation from Eddie very interesting yesterday. What she said is that in a couple of years, we will have the majority of our workforce, the developer workforce, will be Gen Z developers. And they absolutely, you know, they want this. They want to collaborate across the organization. They want to learn from each other. And I think our survey actually turned up that little bit, that learning from each other is the number one reason why people want to do inner source. Um, so that's why developers want it. And, you know, even Gen X folk like me <laughs> have been around for a little bit longer, uh, recognize in a source as a you know superior and actually a more humane development model than what we were used to before and that's why it's so attractive for us um Thank yeah you, and then there are the, the usual suspect like you know in a source makes it development more attractive uh, more efficient it brings up more information uh, more innovation uh, and also what we've seen in corona is that it's more resilient right people learn how to work asynchronously and distributed uh, when corona came around basically just switched they went home and continued work like there was nothing before and Companies value that, obviously. That's, so that's my take on why there is a change here. No, oh, that's brilliant. Thank you, Georg. Isabel, I don't know if you'd like to also comment. Um, you, you also have been here and part of Intersource Commons from, from very, very early days. Would you like to comment on why you think now is the time that we're starting to see this huge spread, huge spurt of momentum? <laughs> so essentially, um, coming from an open source world, I've seen open source contributors and committers try to bring those working models to their employers for years and years. There's people at Apache who called it open development. There's other people who called it inner source. I think having that neutral hub that is ours helps bring all of those people together and that generates additional momentum. So ha having like one name that people can follow and that people can refer to shows the momentum that to some extent has been there before, but also adds to some momentum because we bring those people together who are interested in that and who know what the benefits are. And in addition to that, what I've seen in the open source world is that collaborating across, across organizational boundaries can unleash a lot of potential for innovation. And with that, um, teams can solve problems that locally they wouldn't be able to solve. And I do believe that also commercial organizations now are facing bigger and bigger challenges and bringing in that potential for innovation just helps them as well and they start to see that potential. That's fantastic and I love that point about you know the fact that people are are, are coming together around InterSource here here at the Commons, and and you know it's it's, it's an incredibly valid point. We we continuously meet people who are doing something you know like InterSource maybe or even fully InterSource, but don't call it that. So once they realise they are actually doing InterSource, then they're able to join the tribe of folks that are doing it worldwide, and that reinforces their position and in fact accelerates it. So fantastic point there. Um, and so we've been talking a little bit about where we are right now. Maybe we will move to what the future may hold. So uh, Denise, I'll come to you. Maybe you can also comment on why now, but perhaps even bring us to what you think the future is going to hold for InnerSource and InnerSource Commons. 
Sure. Um, what we saw with open source was uh, at about this point, you know, just coming up on 10 years, um, the, the momentum was definitely gaining. People were starting to be able to uh, drive their careers by becoming um, known for their facility with open source. And I think that's going to happen with inner source as well, because although it is, um, we, we produce an am amazing amount of, you know, helper material. At the end of the day, companies are used to hiring somebody to become the expert on that thing, whatever that thing is. And um, people who have done it successfully in other organizations will be, you know, highly valued. Um, I love the point about the the new kids, the, the new hires all demanding to work this way. Um, we saw that that was going to happen. Uh, we also saw that companies were uh, were reticent to believe us until the pandemic. And, um, you know, the pandemic made it possible for people to be super productive from wherever they were. That Technically, that was always possible, but they were absolved from having to go to work, <laughs> to physically go to work. And, uh, and lo and behold, work still happened. Um, there are companies that are demanding that people go back to work now, but I think we're seeing an equal number of companies who are saying, well, this just doesn't make sense anymore. Um, which in this country, I live in Ireland as, as you do, Claire, um, this country chose to promote remote work first um, during the pandemic and, and after, and they went to a lot of trouble to create internet opportunities, even in very rural areas. And uh, we'd like to see work distributed across the country rather than just focusing in the hubs because it's not healthy to live in high density areas like that generally. I mean, it's interesting, but but it's better to live where you bloom where you're planted. So um, so I think all of that contributes to why now the the fact that the the, the trend watchers have finally figured out that we're here um, is delightful. You know, we've been waiting a long time for that. Now the trick is going to be to continue to lead with authentic information because there will be a wave of people who don't actually know what they're doing who claim that they do. And um, they'll especially be the consulting firms. So hopefully the consulting firms learn from open source that there needs to be an actual bona fide person with experience somewhere in the mix um, that we saw that happening when they were building policies for the EU. They they, they demanded that the the big um, firms hire somebody who knows what they're doing um, in this in this realm, and hopefully that will continue because otherwise we're gonna it, it'll get a little pear shaped for a minute. But I think we've established ourselves as certainly the most central organization to find information and connect. And that's our mission. So that works out really well for us. Um, I also think that the decision to run lean, as in to not, not raise so much money that that becomes most of our job, um, is has been a good one because it helps us stay humble and it helps us not uh, become too grandiose in our in our planning. Now, having said that, um, as new members join, there's a bunch of stuff that they like to see. Um, the the multi language. Uh, translations were really, really helpful for local people, especially in places like Brazil, where um, it's actually a stumbling block if if it's not in Portuguese. So, um, and you know, to be fair, there have been people translating our con our content for a long time, but it's really stepped up in the last few years. I remember a couple of summits ago, we were blown away to suddenly have all of those Asian people you know, following along with simul translation. And I think that um, as the world gets smaller, uh, our, our apparent knowledge of the world gets smaller, inner source gets more and more important. So um, those are some of the trends I see. I think at the end game, everybody will think they know what inner source means. And hopefully more and more companies will be actively practicing it. Um, my next piece of in game is I, I really want to see a shift in the way engineering is taught because we're still teaching hero engineering in every school in the world. Um, there are a few engineers, I mean, sorry, a few teachers who are teaching open source methods, but it's like an exotic thing and it's only in their class. Um, and I think it's it's really the future of the industry to get it that everybody could be working this way and that it's to the benefit of both the organization and the individuals to, to find this balance in their work. 
So. No, that's that's brilliant. And and uh, it's, it's a wish we could all have. I do want to say, though, because, I mean, obviously we've been focusing on the, the Gen Z's and the younger people. But I just want to put a hand up for the oldies to say that, you know, we, we may not have been, you know, brought up this way, but we're all like feeling the benefits now. So it's not just the younger <laughs> folk that actually love Intersource. Maybe we've just been given the permission to to outwardly say it now. So, I mean, obviously there have been so many people who have been dying to work this way. And once they experience it, they never want to go back um, no matter what age you yeah, are. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm, I'm a, technically a baby boomer, right? <laughs> and I, when I found open source, I was never looking back and I left Apple to find it, so. But I think, uh, but too, too true. And, and the point that working together is going to be the future, you know, across generations, across international borders. I don't think there's any organization that feels like that one small team of hero developers is going to be able to change the world anymore to to the same degree because there's so much need for that um, collaboration and so many of the technology solutions. They they can all work for Elon. (laughs) There you go. They can can go go work for Elon (laughs) if if, if that's your preference. Um, Daniel, uh, would you like to comment on how you're seeing that ecosystem evolve um, from both your position, perhaps as president of Intersource Commons, but also uh, from your experience of working in Bertergia, who's obviously active in the scene? Yeah, so... um... Okay, in terms, in terms of, so is, is the question related to the last trends or, or how I see this? Oh, the future, how you see it evolve. But be, please feel free to talk <laughs> about why now and the trends. You've obviously got lots of experience of working across various different organizations. So if you do have a comment about why now, why you're seeing it take off now, please do share. Yeah, so I, I, I wanted to simply stress the point of the pandemic. So that was a really, you know, bad thing that happened. But then at the same time, uh, for open source world specifically an inner source way of working was a way of saying hey this is a resilient way that you can keep basically working together producing code and you know having collaboration in place so i think that was one of the triggers that now we are at, at this stage of course the great work done at the inner source commons i mean everyone going to every place every possible uh, you know conference to say this is inner source and this is what is could be could be helpful for you and not only we've been focusing perhaps part of the discussion in uh, the benefits for individuals but then the benefits for for organizations are are really well known in terms of you know uh, faster to market have a uh, you know more eyes looking at the code code review processes in place will will have an increase in the knowledge sharing uh, quality of the code and, and some other areas so all of this is really, really important from a um, uh, organizational perspective. And what I see is that, uh, you know, we are, I, so Denise, you mentioned that we are in smaller war, perhaps. I think that we are going the opposite because, uh, you know, there are like more walls. I see more walls between countries and everything. But then at the same time, because we have all of these multinationals and large corporations, they still need to collaborate across borders. And inner source is a great way of, of moving this forward, and then specifically at the, you know, at the level of the inner source commons as, as, a, as a foundation, I think uh, we are in in a great place right now to to show to to showcase all of these benefits. So we have, you know, you, you saw before this slide with all of these companies claiming we are doing inner source, and then it's true that there are challenges. Like, okay, what's the what's the definition that there, those companies are using to you know? To say this is inner source, and then there are there are there are uh, you know wearing the, the hat of a consultant, then you can see that there are uh, different reasons first why people are doing inner source, but then even though there are different definitions of what inner source is, because then each of the companies, each of the individuals, they focus on different benefits. So I would say this is this is one of the challenges that we'll need to face in the next months, perhaps years, to you know kind of land this. Um, definition that everyone understands about inner source, having that a clear uh, path into making inner source, perhaps even having a manifesto that we we tried to work in the past and say, okay, this is this is why we are here. And then from the inner source commons, uh, uh, I would say because we are a neutral place, we are trying to build a safe place for everyone to have discussions. Remember, we have Chatham House, uh, Chatham House rule. Um, I think this is this is the place to come, and when we are, we see that the trend is basically more and more organizations, including uh, GitHub training sessions, GitLab training sessions, they are pointing. 
to inner source as well. And if you want to learn more, this is this is where you have to go to the inner source commons. No, thank you very much. And I wonder if anyone would like to, and I'll open this up to all the panelists, if anyone would like to comment as well on the other trends that may be happening. So we've talked about this shift to um, enabling remote working, enabling collaboration across borders that happened maybe accelerated because of the pandemic, was happening anyway, but really kind of got a boost because of the pandemic, letting people see that it was possible. Um, but there have been some other kind of scenarios where inner source is taking off. Because in the early days, we heard a lot um, from Denise and others about perhaps it, it being tied to this journey to open source um, or being linked to innovation efforts within the organization. But over the last little while, we've seen additional kind of trends kind of marry with, with, with inner source or be, be done alongside inner source. So I'm curious as to your perspectives on that. I know there were some presentations even yesterday on on things like agile but would anyone have any comments on the other trends that complement inner source or that that allow for inner source to be um introduced maybe more easily anyone got a comment on that well i said maybe it yesterday okay, everyone's sorry. got a comment <laughs> we go with the spell first <laughs> yeah <laughs> so so i would go back to the teaching open source um idea that Denise referred to earlier and what I've seen when organizations come become more mature with inner source they also tend to become more mature with open source so suddenly they understand that what they are building is for a large part built on top of open source dependencies so they start thinking in a different way um, how these open source projects work and how they are different apart from the license which everyone tends to look at so the, 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 open, the inner source maturity model we have, they suddenly understand that they can be, they ap they apply that to their dependencies as well. And then it's only a tiny step. Like if you're in HL, essentially, if you want to make a change to the dependencies you have, you only have two, two, two way paths to go. One of them is uh, you wait it out and you put it in their backlog. Or the other path is to build a workaround, essentially. And inner source, you know, gives us the middle path. And then it's just a tiny little step to understand that the same applies to any open source dependencies that you have. And then talking to engineers, oftentimes, if they are um, not quite so mature, they think about contributing code. When they've been doing inner source for a longer time, they understand that they have to get into the communications, that they have to get become a part of the community to help documentation, help translations like happens at the inner source commons, and become part of that team and get a lot of benefits from that. And that brings me back to inner source commons, actually. Um, we heard how people are trying to say that they understand inner source. And it's years ago that I heard the term that if you have someone who claims that they understand inner source, checks that they are actually part of the inner source commons and that they are active here as kind of a quality check. And that is something that I find very appealing. Like if you want someone who's really in the know who, and who understands that, they should be involved um, in our neutral hub and they should make substantial contributions here and you should see them. No, thank you. And, and and because, I mean, just even thinking about the conversations we've had over the last year, looking at the patterns that have been added, I mean, this seems to still be evolving in terms of how, how people are implementing the principles that are there. Um, so, you know, it's it's not like it's all figured out yet. So, so one does have to keep on top of exactly what's been happening. So there are a few more people who wanted to come in on that question about other trends that kind of complement or coming alongside inner source who who wants to go next wave at me wait at denise <laughs> i was just gonna say that um, we were very very much assisted by the rise of cicd at the beginning well not too late after we started doing inner source here at inner source commons because it was a sea change for a lot of companies to um, get that implemented and nobody wanted to see it done piecemeal across the country, company based on silo boundaries, because that kind of obviates the whole point. Um, so, you know, it was very helpful that there was suddenly something to do that required cooperation. And um, most companies didn't, weren't too sure how to go about that. 
so anyway, I think that was very, very helpful. And I think we're going to continue to see cooperation become more important. It is true that the, the global politics are getting sort of nationalistic, right? But historically, that can't actually go on for very long. No, no country is an island, as we learned during the um, the big problems at the beginning of the pandemic with with um, supply chain. Nobody can really, you know, stand out as an island, uh, even this little island we live on. And so I think cooperation is going to continue to be important. It might just be a select group of companies that are cooperating, as has happened in previous times of strife. But I do think there will be cooperation. Thank oh. you. And, and, and I'll add, oh, Georg, go ahead. Uh, yeah, a quick, another observation, perhaps, unless you want to add on what Denise said. No, no, I'll, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. There's one thing I also noticed that I guess promoted InnoSource to a certain extent, and that is uh, company values, right? I've been with Bob for 20 years and I've seen several iterations of company values. I mean, this core is the same, but one thing I've seen often is that collaboration, the value of collaboration is more and more anchored in company values, right? Something in the strategy, basically. And then the other thing is digital transformation. That's what lots of businesses in the, you know, from traditional industries are currently in. And I think InnoSource, you know, let me start differently what they know usually how to do and what they understand of digital transformation is like, you know, tools, processes, environments, platforms, stuff like that. But the, I think the inner source is making a really good offer in terms of completing the last step of the digital transformation. And that is collaboration that actually lays out how to do it properly and how, how and that's, I think, why inner source should be part of the digital transformation in any case. And I think now is the perfect time to, you know, anchor inner source in your organization. Perhaps that's also why it's so widespread right now. Georg, Daniel, you wanted to comment as well. Oh yeah, just as to mention on 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 top of what we have already said is, uh, and this is this is perhaps mainly about the future or what I see certain trends is uh, based on in this case personal experience, anecdotal data. We can say is uh, that uh, when talking about inner source within corporations, there are um, I see that there is a there are discussions about moving that forward and kind of the question on the table. Can this only be applied to source code? Is its inner source only focused on source code? And then there are I know companies that are heavily research oriented. So then they are producing uh, prototypes. They are producing knowledge. So how can we break down silos safely within the corporation? So then research knowledge can basically spread all across the organization. But then uh, building standards, internal standards, is where inner source is playing a, a good role. I've seen. Uh, from time to time, like, okay, uh, this is a way that we need collaboration across different departments to make this happen, right? And and even more at the level of business, we can think from the inner source perspective, let's say our approach initially product owner. So we have business people that are trying to collaborate together, but what if we open and we focus only on the business business layer? So those are three areas that I see that there is there are, there are chances that the, perhaps the definition of inner source could be expanded, if that makes sense. Um, just to mention this. No, thank you. And and I'll I'll add in one more that again, no no necessarily trending data right now, but it was it was brought up anecdotally to me at the open source finance forum where it was commented upon that with the whole Gen AI kind of um interest right now and that being a, a very a very strong trend in terms of development, um, and that a lot of organizations are thinking about, you know, doing internal development because they may want to actually use their data internally and therefore building large language models internally. And it was commented on that inner source, again, would be perfect for those sorts of efforts because to build responsible AI, you do want that collaborative effort um, across the organization. So um, perhaps we're going to see more uh, alignment with, with more trends in the future as well. So if anyone does spot any other ones, please do share them with us because um, it's always good to, to see where it thrives and where and how inner source um, is being introduced into organizations because sometimes it's alongside these other areas as, as it comes. So um, we're at about uh, 12 minutes past eight now here on UTC. And I, at this point in time, I would like to say a huge thank you to our panelists. Thank you, Georg, Isabel, Denise, and Daniel uh, for, for, for answering our questions. I'm going to now open it up to everyone in the summit. You may also have your questions for our panel. So I'd invite people at this point, if they want to turn on their cameras um, and wave at me if you have a question or indeed 
ask your question in the chat. I'll just go back in and see now if there's a if there's any questions already there. Um, 